Hi, in this slide I want to uh, uh, expand on a point I made in the last one, which was if we have the right philosophical assumptions, uh, that will give us uh, extra energy for staying with the, the path of mastery. And here's some of those thoughts. First of all, uh, and this is sort of a defensive one, the, the world continues to change, and as it changes, it sort of erodes our competencies, you know. So if you if a customer now, for example, can go on the net and get into their own page on our website and any and everything they'd ever want to know about their account, their stuff, what they bought, the, the trend of what they bought, the, you know, average, you know, monthly consumption, all that stuff is there, it cuts down a lot of questions they normally would have asked our outside or inside salespeople. So to a certain degree, it's eroded that value added that, uh, that, that our outside inside salespeople used to do as far as information relay messengers. However, with new technology, what is the next level of value added, find new needs, fill them, can we do for customers? So hopefully what we're doing is we have living edges to what we're learning and doing to continue to increase our value proposition that's greater than our dying edges. So we, we, we have a, a very viable reason for existing in our ecosystem. A second key point is to disabuse um, the myths that undergird the endless climax, the idea that we, somehow we can get rich quick. Yeah, you can if you win the lottery, but statistically it's a bad investment, so don't do it. So you could get rich or skilled very quick. It doesn't happen. Any worth doing is worth doing well, and it takes a lot of time and patience. So better to move along the path of mastery at an optimum good pace and have you know the patience that you can compound in the long run. The second part of that is, is that if I got rich quick and I could go buy this kind of car or that kind of watch or some status symbol, that then that would be the good life. If I could just work hard for five seconds, I get Bud Light for 10 seconds and we'll, we'll quaff Bud Light for the rest of our lives. It sort of implies that there's this high <clears throat> happy ever after plateau. Well, you know that when you get to a next pl plateau, it, it's, it's kind of fun for a little bit, the view's a little bit better, but then it gets kind of boring and you realize that there's even more plateaus further ahead that you couldn't see before. So the path becomes endless. So better to sort of say, well, I'm not going to worry about, you know, happy ever after. I'm going to worry about being happy internally with my path progress. The third key thing is that um, <clears throat> for three and a half million years, as as humans were being sort of hacked out of the, the, the creative uh, uh, scene, uh, we were blessed with all this energy that we needed to go out and forage 24 hours a day, seven days a week to try to survive long enough to have uh, offspring that, that could, you know, keep our DNA going. Mother Nature really didn't care about us after 35 for sure. Uh, well, thanks to our brains and our cooperation and discovering oil and lots of technology and so forth, we have... Uh, freed up our, our energy enormously so we don't have to be busy workers surviving 24-7 and busy workers tend to be happy workers or certainly they don't have time to think about being bored. So what are we going to do with our surplus survival energy? That's the big question. So we need some sort of game. Some people say, I want to play the material toy game. The guy that dies with the most toys wins, even though the maintenance of them is consuming them like crazy, da 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 You know, that's what they want to do. There are other people that want to play the, uh, the good fill-in-the-blank uh, religion game. There are other people that want to play the, the uh, I want to win the 85 and over or I know a guy who he and his partner went to Rome for the international over 90 tennis tournament. And, you know, they won by showing up in a sense. So, um, you know, we, we have to have a game. Otherwise, we tend to get bored and we start to drift downward. So we want to be busy in a path kind of way to be happy. So pick a game. And I think as long as you have to have, make a living, one path might be, well, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to aspire to define and become you know, a black belt, first, second, third degree, whatever I'm doing, and I'm going to aspire to learn how to learn very well so that I can not only do it better myself, I can turn around and help to teach my children and, and followers that I may have. Uh, another key concept is to realize that mastery really is a key tool for moving up Maslow's hierarchy of, of satisfaction. Uh, 
you know, we go from survival mode to because we get good at the survival skills, we get a little bit of extra room. We're saying, well, sir, I'm good at survival. I actually have a little extra money so I can, you know, uh, have a hot fudge sundae. Maybe we continue to get better to the point where we say, well, you know, I really do this pretty well compared to everybody else. I have pride. I have status. But of course, that again is measuring ourselves by the outside world and typically in a little provincial, local Bush League myopic way as opposed to, well, the truth of the matter is on a global best practice basis, I'm not winning the gold medal in my event um, and I never will. So really, how can I work with my competitors locally to enrich what we're doing and move together along this path and to the point where it, we, we enjoy it for just the fact that we're doing it and we're making a net contribution, not just to ourselves, but to people around us. We are a good steward. We're leaving things better than we found it. Um, a last philosophical point I want to make is that, you know, to go from, you know, white belt to black belt initially seems like a very long journey. And so we have to say, look, yeah, it is a long journey, but don't worry about it. Let's stay right here in the present and let's make the first step you know, so small and so safe and so interesting and so fun that that's fun all by itself. And then once we get that, we'll do the second step and the third step. But what quietly is happening is we're accumulating confidence and a, and a learning momentum that starts to compound. So we start to be able to learn and learn how to learn at ever greater rate. At some point, it becomes quite self-fueling. And the better we get, the more we love it, the more we love it, the more we want to work at it. And around we go in a, in a virtuous cycle. So we do have to have faith that in a slow and steady compounding way, this can happen. And of course, that's why we look around for paragons. We look around for the absolute best at doing something and think, well, gosh, if they can do it, why can't we? So as a group, we can make it happen. So those are some philosophical uh, ideas to underpin uh, motivation for mastery. Thank you.